You can take a widening child's pose. Our amazing master student over here, Sarah, will be demoing for us. So cross-legged, seated position, anything that you feel, get yourself ready for your practice. And we will stand up in about two minutes, chant Om, and get on with the practice. perfect place to come into that state of awareness. The best place to be when you're in your state of awareness is in the body. You will notice that you will be up in your mind at times in the practice. And what our mind likes to do is remember the past and plan for the future. So we don't need to be planning anything right now or remembering anything from the past. We just wanna be here now and we do that by feeling the body, noticing the sensations. And once we start to move, your body and awareness will be flooded with thousands of little sensations to pay attention to. So let's begin our little ritual of consciousness, standing on your two feet with the sound of OM together. Join the palms, lower the chin, close the eyes. We take that first deep inhale. Om. Have a great practice. Now lower the hands to the side of the body. It's first position, Samasiti, is where we build upon all the concepts that we're going to use to practice with. So here your feet can be joined or a little bit of space between the ankles. More importantly, what you want to do is feel the hard floor under the feet and start to engage your thigh, feeling the kneecap lifting up and pressing the biggest bone in your body, your femur, your thigh bone into the back of your leg. Now keep that connection in your legs, start to draw the belly in. Or if you focus at the back of the pelvis, your sacrum and your tailbone are moving down towards the heels, creating space in your lower back. Now let's come up a little higher. Those ribs that are just above your stomach, pull those into the body. So those same ribs at the back body move out into the skin because the lungs are in the back just as much as they're in the front. Here, your chin would be parallel to the floor, gazing straight forward. And here's where we move. So staying active through the legs, inhale, Lift up through the arms, bring your palms together. Keeping your legs strong, exhale, forward bend down, bring the hands to the floor. Same action, your legs, inhale, lift the chest and the chin up away from the knees. Now put your hands down, exhale back to a plank position. Keep your legs strong and lower all the way down onto the mat. Point the toes back, hands are just behind the armpits. Press down, inhale, lift up through the shoulders. Keep your arms bent or straight, what's appropriate for you. Now curl the toes under, exhale, lift up your hips, move the backs of the thighs towards the back of the mat and come onto the soles of the feet. For one, notice the breath you're breathing. Two, the whole practice, we're gonna breathe through the nose because taking the air through the nose helps to keep the nervous system nice and calm. Three, you'll notice there's a smooth sound that comes along with this breath. Make the sound of the breath a priority. Four, you are evenly breathing into your back as you do into your chest. Now take one more breath. Inhale in and exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, step or jump back between the hands and create that long spine to engage the legs. Exhale, fold down, let the head hang loose. Use your legs to inhale, lift the spine, raise the arms, bring the palms back together and exhale into Samasiti. Number two is just like that. Inhale, lift through the arms, squeeze the palms together. Exhale, forward bend all the way down the front of the thighs. It's your legs that inhale, lift the chest and the chin up, 
away from the knees. Your hands become the foundation. Exhale back to plank. Keep your legs strong, lower all the way to the belly. Point the toes back, press into the palm. Inhale, lift the shoulders directly up above the wrist bones. Then curl the toes under. Exhale, hips up, back of the thighs move behind you. And the heels, they also move back behind you and down in space. For one, we're keeping the same action in your legs. In fact, every time your leg is straight in yoga, it's the same action of the quadricep muscle. Two, when you're engaging the front of the thigh, you're gently creating space at the back of the thigh. For three, pushing the heels back and down in space. If they can actually touch, move your feet back about half an inch and recreate that same action. Four, hearing the sound of the breath. And five, bend the knees. Look forward, inhale, step or jump forward. Lift through the spine, engage your legs, exhale, fold the spine so the head hangs down. Inhale, lift up, raise the arms, palms together. Staying in an upright position, exhale, lower the arms to the side of the body. Number three, with more sound, inhale, lift through the arms. The smooth sound, exhale, fold down the legs. Smooth inhale, lifts the spine up, lengthen position. Smooth exhale, hands down, feet back, lowering all in one smooth motion. Press the feet, then the hands inhale. Hear the sound when you lift into your back bend. Hear the sound as you exhale up into the forward bend. For one, we spend a lot of time on the hands, so spread the fingers. Two, put equal amount of weight in the knuckles as you do in those little wrist bones. Three, the elbows like to hyperextend in this position. So bend the elbow just one little minor degree. Four, rotate your bicep up and your outer arm, your tricep down and external rotation at the arm. Take one more breath in. And then as you exhale, re-bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step, jump to plant the feet and lift the spine up. Exhale, fold the spine into the legs. Inhale, when you lift your spine up, keep the belly up and in. And exhale, release the arm. Samasiti side of the body. We're gonna do two more like this. Inhale, lift through the arms without those front ribs coming up. Exhale, fold the belly on top of the thighs. Inhale, lift away from the thighs. Maybe even look in front of your mat. Now look down as you exhale, hands down, feet back, lowering to find the neutral pelvis. Inhale, extend the spine up, taking your back bend. Exhale, hips up, thighs back, heels down. Breathing for one. Make the quality of the breath the main priority. For two, become more subtle with your body by observing the breath. Three, breathe evenly into the back of the body as you do into the front of the body. Four, and five would Rebend the knees, the inhale, step or jump to plant the feet, lift through the chin. Exhale, fold down into your legs. Your legs, inhale, lift the spine, lift the arms, bring the palms together. Exhale, release the arms. Last one, inhale to lift. Exhale as you fold down the legs. Inhale a little lift. Hands down, exhale, feet back, lowering, neutral pelvis is set. Then inhale, lift, keeping the space in your lower back. And exhale, curl the toes, lift the hips, reset the feet. For one, keep your eyes open every time you go upside down. 
too. I know we like to prefer to close the eyes, but yoga has nothing to do with what you prefer. Keep your eyes open and focus your gaze at one point like a laser. And try to observe how focusing on this one point has a very, very subtle effect on your awareness. Take one more inhale in. And then when you exhale, take your gaze back to the hands. Inhale, jump there, and then lift the spine so you gaze in front of the mat. Exhale, fold down, look at the feet. Inhale, rise up. You take the gaze and look up at the hands. And then when you release the arm, exhale, you're gazing straight forward. Surya Namaskara B just gets a little longer as you bend your knees. Inhale, your arms sweep up. Exhale, fold down your straight and active legs. Third movement, inhale up with chest and chin, the same as A. Plant your hands, exhale, step, jump back, lower down with neutral pelvis. Plant palms, inhale, lift the shoulders. Press into the palm, exhale, lift up your hips. Now turn the left foot out, step the right foot forward. Inhale, lift the spine, then extend the arms, maybe even look up at the hands. Exhale, hands go down first. You step back to plank and you lower with that neutral pelvis. Reset, inhale, lift the shoulders up above the wrist bones. Exhale, lift your hips. Now turn the right foot out, step your left foot forward. Inhale when you lift the body from the floor and then exhale when you're returning to the floor. Hands, feet back, bend the elbows to lower the shoulders. Reset your foundation. Inhale, hear the sound when you lift. Exhale, hear the sound as you fold. One. Noticing all the sensations with your breath. Two. Three. I'm just counting. You breathe at your own pace. Four. Taking one more. And right about now, bending the knees. Inhale to the feet to lift the chin. Exhale to fold into your straight legs. Then bend the knees as you inhale and lift up your arms. And exhale, stand and release your arms. We're gonna do two more, just like that. Bend the knees, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold down into Uttanasana. Inhale that little lift, Urdhva Mukha Uttanasana. Plant the palms, low plank, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, upward facing. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing. Left foot points out, right foot steps forward. Inhale, Warrior Virabhadrasana A. Exhale all the way down into your low plank, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, upward facing. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing. Now turn the right foot, step into your left side, rise with an inhale, lower down with exhale, back to Chaturanga, keeping the strength in the core, press down to inhale, lift up the face, Urdhva Mukha, and then exhale, lower the head as you lift the hips into Adho Mukha Svanasana. For one. Breath is longer. Breath is smoother, breath is louder for two. All the sensations with the breath are the most obvious sensations that we are feeling for three. And four, taking one more, inhale in, and then exhale, get ready to move. And then use the inhale, step, jump to the feet, create that long lifted spine, exhale, fold down, sit down, inhale, lift your arms, exhale, stand, release them to Samasiti. Last one, bend the knees, inhale up, exhale down, straighten active legs, inhale a little up, 
Plant palms, exhale, jump back and lower down. Inhale, up, and exhale back. Pivot left, step your right. Inhale as you lift up. Exhale, on the way back down. Reset, inhale as you lift up. Exhale as you go back, do the other side. So pivot the right, step your left, inhale as you go up, exhale as you go down. You're getting the idea. Every time we go up, it's inhale. And then every time we lower the head, it's an exhale. For one. Two. Three, four, five, bend the knees, inhale to the feet, and then lengthen the spine, exhale, fold down, sit down, inhale, lift the arms, exhale, stand, and release the arms. First two forward bends, inhale, separate the feet the width of your hips. Exhale, fold down low enough, you can hook your big toes with your peace fingers. Take that inhale to lengthen the spine, then you bend the elbows and exhale, fold the lower part of your belly to the top of the thigh, lengthening your chest down past the knees. Let the head hang loose so the gravity is creating some space in the neck. And we're working on the same connection to the legs that we established in Samasiti. A straight leg is a straight leg. You are engaging the thigh, which is shortening the muscle, which bulges it up at the front of the thigh. And the reaction is a gentle space that you're creating at the back of the thigh. Let's take another three. And another two. And one. Now on that next inhale, lift the chest and the chin, just like in your sun salutation. Exhale there. Inhale, take your hands, slide them right under the soles of the feet so your toes touch the wrist. And exhale, tilt the pelvis forward and fold right back down into the second set. Pada Hastasana. Same action in your leg, engaging the quad, feeling the reaction of the space at the back of the quad, the back of the thigh. But be gentle to your legs. This is the first forward bend. There's many other forward bends yet to come. Come back into the sound of the breath for three, reminding yourself it's a breathing practice for two, And one, your inhale lifts your chest and chin. Your exhale removes the hands from under the feet. Inhale, lift your spine into its upright position. Just come up, all the way up. There you go, right where we started. And exhale your feet back together, sama stiti. Now inhale, turn to your right 90 degrees. Separate your feet the length of one of your legs and lift your arms parallel to the floor. Turn your right foot 90 degrees to the back. And then exhale, reach your right arm as far as you can over that right leg. And when you can't reach any further, lower your right hand down towards your right foot. Extend your left arm up to the ceiling and turn your gaze, that drishti point, and look at the thumb that's in the space, in the air, for one. This is now our first external rotator of the femur at the hip for two. Rotating the thighs out, finding the neutral pelvis, and descending the tailbone for three. Pulling those front ribs into the body for four. Hearing the sound of your breath, five. Look down. Inhale, lift up. Turn the right foot to the right side. Then turn your left foot to the front edge. And then exhale, lengthen the left arm over the front leg, and then lower the hand directly below the shoulder. 
Same with the top arm, raise the top hand above the top shoulder. And that drishti looks up. Where we look is really where we're taking our energy. So press into the four corners of the feet, into the hard floor, and create the feeling that you're just about to lift out of this left side. Meaning there's more of a feeling of lift than the feeling of the gravity that's pulling you down. Let's take two more. And one more as you exhale, look down so you got your balance. Now inhale, come up. Now take your left arm up, right arm down, turn from the right side all the way around and face the back edge of the mat with your hips, your belly and your shoulders. Turn the belly, so you gotta turn all the way around to the back. There you go. Now there, exhale, take a forward bend. So lower down with the upper body, left hand comes to the floor on the inside of the foot or the outside of the foot. And then you raise the opposite shoulder, lift the opposite arm. And again, look up at that thumb in space for one. The twist of Trikonasana, Parvarita, Trikonasana for two. Be stable in your legs so that you can twist your spine effectively for three. So you always have that freedom to just adjust the back foot so you're a little bit more stable for four. Take one more inhale in, look down with the exhale. Inhale, you come up by lifting the left arm. And then as you turn back to the front, switch the arm. So take the left arm down and then the right arm up. Inhale, square the hips. Exhale, forward bend down, right hand, inner foot or the outer foot. Left shoulder lifts, left arm extends for one. Here our legs are going back into that inner rotation. For two, the two frontal hip bones are squared to the front edge of the mat. For three, it's your legs providing the stability for the spine. For four, the twist is simply coming from the use of your arms. Five, look down. Inhale, lift yourself up. And exhale, step back into Samasiti, where we started from. Now let's do that pair again, but by bending the front knee. So turn to the right, take a wider step with the feet, raise the arms, inhale. Turn the right foot to the back. Start to bend your right knee, keeping your neutral pelvis, lower your right arm to the right side of your right leg. Down to the ground, or if it's too low, you can put a block under the right hand. Now reach the left arm. So you're making a long straight edge with the left side of your body. Or in other words, the angle of your back left leg that's coming off the ground, your top arm would match that same angle. Hence the name extended side angle position. We're at three, bottom arm is on the outside of the front leg. That's the inside. So take it to the outside for two and one. On your next inhale, press into the front foot to come up, arms parallel to the floor, right foot to the right side, left foot to the front edge. Bend the left knee, your left arm lowers to the left side of your left leg. That's the right side of your left leg. There it goes. One, extend the left arm. Extend the right arm actually. <laughs> For two, but pull that top shoulder away from the top here down towards the hip. Three, in other words, bring your right shoulder and your right hip towards each other. For four, take one more. And five, next inhale, come up. Now like the last twist, we're gonna take the left arm up, right arm down. We're gonna turn the hips all the way around to face the back edge of the mat. You can start to bend the right knee. And then as you exhale, take the back of your left arm to the far outer edge of the right knee. And you can just do a prayer hands if you get there. Palm to palm. Or if your left hand can go to the floor on the outside of your right pinky toe, then you would extend your top arm on the same angle 
as he did in the last expression. So instead of pointing the arm to the ceiling, point it on an angle towards the back edge of the mat. That's the front edge of your mat. The back edge of your mat is where your head is. There it goes. We're at three. This is simply the twisted variation of the extended side that you just did before this. For two, that's why the top arms are the same. And one, on your next inhale, lift out of your right side twist. Exhale, turn all the way around, face the front of the mat. You'd have your right arm lifted in the air. Left knee is bent. Exhale, help the back of the right arm, far outer edge of the left knee. Either prayer hands or reach the right hand to the floor. And then the top left arm points over top of the front edge of the mat. One. Twist, love to squeeze the lungs for two. So try to counteract the squeezing of the lungs by slowing the breath down for three. Can you make this next breath the slowest breath of your practice for four. Take one more. And then on your next inhale, you would lift yourself up. And then one exhale, you step back to Samasiti. Now that step to the right, so turn 90 degrees, separate your feet the same distance. And we start with the hands on the hips. We're gonna do four forward bends like this. Take an inhale, stand tall, exhale, Forward bend down, put the hands on the floor, shoulder distance apart, just like your downward dog. Take an inhale there, lift the chest and the chin, and then exhale, lower the head down to the floor and start to walk the hands back so that your wrist is underneath your elbow for one. In other words, you're pushing the palm into the floor to create that length of spine so the head is coming closer to the mat for two. And even though we're pressing into the palm, make sure your shoulders are moving up towards your hips for three. Using those muscles in your mid back range for four. And then breathing into the back. On your next inhale, lift up through your chest and chin. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale to come up. Exhale there, and then arms, inhale out. Exhale, hands to hips. B variation, they're gonna stay here. Take an inhale. Exhale, tilt the pelvis forward and fold back down. One. Keep your feet pointing nice and straight to the side of the mat for two. They have a very subtle inward rotation. For three, notice how if you relax the legs, how the feet kind of want to pull out to the side. So keep the action in the legs and that inner rotation for four. Take one more inhale in, but stretch out the exhale. Next inhale, you come all the way up on one lift. Exhale once you're there. Arms, inhale up. Exhale behind the back. Little shoulder opener with the forward bend. Inhale, tilt your pelvis forward, exhale. Head to the floor and reaching the hands away from the back so they too come down. Breathing into the upper portions of the lungs. It's quite natural to feel that when you inhale, you're breathing into the constriction, the tightness of the muscles. But when you exhale, that's when you might be able to feel the hands move a little bit away from the floor, or sorry, a little bit away from the back. Say another two. And one. Spread your toes. Inhale, lift all the way up with the strength of your legs. Exhale, put the hands on the hips. We got one more like this. Take an inhale here. Exhale, fold back down and hook the big toes with your peace fingers like we've done on the first standing pose. Inhale, maybe you can bend your elbows up in space and exhale, descend the head down in space. Quad is still active for one. 
Remembering a straight leg in yoga is a straight leg. Same action for two. Creating gentle space at the back of the thigh for three. The organ we're triggering these forward bends is the kidney, the space in your lower back that you're opening. For four, take one more inhale in. Stretch out the exhale. Inhale lifts the chest and the chin up. Exhale releases the big toes. Inhale lifts you into an upright position. Turn to face the front. Exhale, step back into Sama, CT. Pars Votanasana. So first, take your hands back behind the spine into that reverse prayer position. So you're gonna wiggle the pinky fingers close to the spine, hands up towards the back of the skull. Now, turn to face the right side. So turn 90 degrees and turn another 90 degrees and turn all the way around and face the back edge of the mat. Have a little bit more space between your feet. Back foot is at 45 degrees. Inhale, stand tall, exhale, forward bend down the inside of the right leg for one. Now, as you move down in space, keep moving your elbows up in space. Elbows move up away from the floor for two. Even the hands, they start to move from that lower back, mid back, your hands are moving up towards the back of the skull for three. And then where you feel the hands in the back of the body, breathe into that space for four. One more inhale in, stretch out your exhale. One long inhale to lift yourself up, turn back to the right side, turn back to face the front, and exhale, fold forward from the hip without locking the front knee for one. So put a little micro bend into the front knee, press into the front foot and put more weight in your back heel for two. Treat the back leg like an anchor and put as much weight as you can into the heel for three. As you're lengthening the spine down towards the front foot for four, one more inhale in, stretch out your exhale. Next inhale, you lift yourself up, you would release your hands and exhale, step forward into Samasiti. Our first balance position. So you're gonna take your right arm out, inhale, raise the right leg. You can lift a bent leg and hold a bent knee, or you can reach for the big toe Straighten out the right leg and either stand tall or forward bend from the hips. Like you're gonna, you're gonna move towards that right big toe. We're already at three. The work is the standing leg for four and five. Now inhale, stand up with the head, move it towards the ceiling and then exhale, open your right arm and your right leg about 45 degrees to the side. And the challenge is now to look off of your left shoulder. So move your chin off the left shoulder for two. Keep breathing with sound for three. Focusing your sight like a laser for four. And five, inhale, return the leg to the front. Exhale, little forward bend, head down towards the right knee. Then inhale, lift the head back up. Then exhale, release the right foot, put the hands on the hips. I count down from five, reaching from the back of the body through the bones of the feet, four. And the hip starts to cramp, just start to wiggle the foot a bit for three. Everybody's hip gets sore right about now for two. Lift a little higher and exhale, lower it down, all done. Except for that other side. <laughs> Raise the left arm, inhale, reach for the left knee, the left big toe, straighten the leg out, maybe stand tall or maybe fold forward, one. Good idea is just to repeat what you did on your right side for two. Keep the breath with sound, three, four, and five. Inhale, lift the head up to the ceiling. And then exhale, arm and leg open, about 45 degrees. 
Now we take the chin towards the right shoulder. We're at two, three, four, and five. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, lower your forehead down to your left knee. Then inhale, lift the head back up, and then exhale, release the foot for five. Keeping the foot as high as you can for four. But lower the left hip down from the armpit. Three, two, one, exhale. We'll just do the standing variation of half lotus. So inhale, we're gonna raise our right foot up to the crease of your left groin so your right leg forms a half lotus position. You would hold your right foot with your left hand. So that's a tree pose. Bring your right foot into the grip of your left hand. You got it. Hold it with your left hand. Now take your right hand around the back and your right hand is gonna hold on to your left elbow, left forearm or left wrist. And just stay there. Bringing the right knee in as close to the left knee as it will go. We're already at two. And three, and four, and five. Now to get out of this, lift the knee up to the height of your hip, straighten the leg out just like we did before. Exhale, lower the leg down. Now lean on the right foot. Inhale, lift up your left foot. Bring it to the crease of where your right groin is. Hold it with your right hand. Now take the left hand across the mid back and start to hook your fingers into your right elbow, your right forearm, your right wrist, eventually that left hand holding onto that left big toe. Yeah, just stand tall. Two. Three. four, five, knee up, inhale, straight leg, exhale, and return to Samasiti. Here's where we add the float. So turn back to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift up through the arms, palms together. Legs active, exhale, fold down them, hands to the floor. Strong legs, inhale, lift the chest and the chin up in space. Now plant your palms. Exhale, feet back, lower down with neutral pelvis. Press into the palm, inhale, lift up through the shoulders. Press into the palm, exhale up through the hips. From here, use an inhale and jump forward into Utkatasana. Jump, keep the knees bent, raise the arms, bring your palms together, gaze up at the thumbs for one. In this kind of squat position, Keep searching for that neutral pelvis for two. Lower the leg bones down a little lower and then lift the arm bones a little higher for three. Going down and up in the same position, four. And here's where we'll do a little arm balance, five. If you're gonna exhale, come down into a low squat that will set you up for your Bakasana Crow. Put your knees on the outsides of your arms. Put your arms on the inside of the knee. There you go, bend the arms. Put the knees up onto the upper arm bone. Move your head forward so you move the weight out of the feet, more into the hand. Inhale, if you haven't lifted the feet already, lift every part of your body that can go up towards the ceiling. When you have enough of the challenge, you step, jump out, take a float. Remember to maintain the breath with sound. Down dog. I've got to go to warriors yet. Our last two standing poses, your left foot, turn it out at 45 degrees. Inhale, step the right leg straight forward into that 90 degree angle. 
come up, you square the hips, you square the shoulders, you lift the arms, you bring your palms together. The gaze is the thumbs. So lift the chin, but without putting any little pressure into the back of the neck. Arms are up, chin is up, the gaze is up, you're looking up. Breathing with that smooth sound. We're at three. And four. And five. Now stay looking at your hands. Just listen. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Good. Now for the first time in your practice, turn to your left. Turn to face the left side. And keep turning all the way around. So you turn around and face the back edge of the mat. Then re-bend the left knee and turn your back foot in towards you at 45 degrees. Good. You did all that without relying on your eyes. You did it with your awareness, feeling your experience of your body in space. Now lower the shoulders as far down from your ears as you can. Now we're in the left side. Now arms are up straight. Arms are up straight. Just take the shoulders from the ears. Now on the exhale, open your arms to the length of your mat. Now open your back foot out to 90 degrees. So when you open the back foot, it's now gonna turn your two hip bones to face the left side of the mat. Stack your shoulders directly on top of the hip bones. So make sure you don't lean forward a bit, kind of come back into the back leg. Now inhale, straighten your left leg, the front leg. Turn your left foot to the left side. Turn your right foot to the front. And then when you start to bend the right knee, keep drawing the belly in or the sacrum and the tailbone at the back of the body down. Keep looking for the neutral pelvis. You cannot overdo it in this position. Now let's take a flow. Exhale, put the hands down. Step jump back to your plank position and you know what to do from there. Link your breath and your movement together, protecting your lower back as you move through the flow. First seated position, inhale, jump through, and straighten out the two legs. Our seated samasiti is called dandasana, so sit upright as tall as you can. Press the arms straight down into the floor, into the palm. Reach the head up to the ceiling, but lower your chin halfway down towards the collarbone. Now create that neurological feeling like you're standing on your legs. Spread the toes. Join the big toes and engage the quad. Feel that when you engage your quad, it presses the back of your thigh into the hard floor. So keep that action. Now inhale, reach forward and grab onto the big toes. Keep that action in your legs. Now exhale, Fold your belly over your thighs, your chest over your knees. Keep holding the big toes. There's a very specific reason why we grab those big toes. Pull back on the big toes, but then press the mound of the big toe away from you. So you're creating a, like a bind in which you pull on something, but resist it. It's like you're creating a lock. And there's a lot of these little binds in vinyasa yoga. Pull back on the toes, but push the toes away from you. Now the second set, inhale, lift up a few inches. So you come up out of the forward bend. Now grip the outer edges of the feet, or maybe you wrap around the feet, and then exhale back in. Now the reason we change the grip of the hands is because the grip on the feet has a different effect on the pelvic floor. It has nothing to do with the stretching of your hamstrings but what's happening in the pelvic bowl. Remove your awareness from the stretch and feel anything else that's going on other than the length of the muscle. Now here's where we add in the first flow between your seated positions. Inhale, come all the way back up into Dandasana, sitting tall. Exhale, cross your legs. First movement, inhale, lift your bum up first and then put the hands forward and exhale back to plank. Moving on through, modify the plank and the back bend that is appropriate for you. All the way back to seated, all the way back to straight legs. 
Now your spine, lean it back at 45 degrees. And when you lean back, put your hands directly under the shoulders, point your toes, inhale, lift the front body up to the ceiling, and you open your neck by moving the chin away from the collarbones. We're already at three. Micro bend the elbow so you don't hyperextend for four. And five, it's the exhale that brings you down. A little reminder, the first movement, cross your legs, inhale, lift the hips up first, and then move the hands forward, hips back, and down you go second. You got it. Move through the flow. All the way back to seated. And this is one we did in the standing sequence. We're going to take our right foot on an inhale up to the crease of the left groin. Put your right foot in the crease of your left groin. Half lotus, lift, there we go. Now, if your right knee doesn't come to the ground, do you have a block? No block, don't worry about it. Take the right hand, reach it around the mid back and reach your right hand for your right big toe. Whether you can grab it or not, just reach for it. Now take your left hand towards your left foot. Left hand, left foot, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. I count down from five. Ardha Bada Padma, half bound lotus forward bend. Two. Paying attention to your knee. So, no pinching ever in the knee joints or any position in any joints for that matter. We want to respect the joints so we can keep coming back and doing more yoga. On your next inhale, lift all the way back into your upright position. Exhale, release the right leg out, straight legs. Option if you want to flow or go right on to the left side. So the left foot is up into the crease of the right groin. Left hand is reaching for the left, excuse me, the left foot. Right hand, right foot. Exhale. One, you got your arms doing two different things. So even though you got one arm going forward and one arm going back, try to square the shoulders. So there's symmetry between the shoulders and the hips, even though the legs and the arms are all doing different things. Come back into the breath for three. And two. And one. Back into the moving with breath, inhale up, exhale, release and cross your legs, take your flow. Inhale, you lift up and then exhale, feet go back, move slowly. Move like you're feeling each little part of the vinyasa flow, all the way back to seated. Now we do a little back bend with the right leg. So we're now gonna close the right knee Put the top of the right foot on the floor so that your right toes are pointing to the wall behind you. Bring the right knee in so your right leg points straight just like your left leg. Inhale, both hands reach for the left foot or put them on the ground if you need them to balance. And like all forward bends, it's the exhale that takes you forward. Into Taringai, Mukhi Kaipada, Paschimottanasana. It's a long one. Two. Breathing practice. Three. Four. Five. To switch the sides or to take a vinyasa flow first, then on the other side, do what is appropriate for you? What does your body want to do today? Does it want to move more or move less? It is up to you. Left side is waiting for you. Five. Four. Three.
to one. Back to the movement part. Inhale up. Exhale, cross the legs. Inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, plant the palms. Move back to plank. Slowly feeling the movements, always keeping the space in the lower back, keeping that neutral pelvis, all the way back to seated position. Janu Shasana A, very basic position. Take the sole of your right foot to the inside of your left thigh. Take both hands to your left foot. Inhale, create length in your spine. And exhale, you create a little twist in this position by moving your chest towards the left knee. So chest to the left knee. And if it can go, your chin would start to lengthen down the left side of your lower leg bone. The top of your head is moving to the top of the left foot. But get out of the feeling that you're stretching your left leg and come into the awareness that you're opening the space on the right side of your lower back for the kidney. Every position is opening and squeezing some organs. So the kidney is being opened and your abdominal and digestive organs are getting a little massage. Let's do the other side. Inhale, sit up, exhale, straight legs. Inhale, left foot inside of left thigh. Exhale, chest to right knee, chin to lower leg bone. Your head moving to the top of the right foot for two. Three. Four. Five, inhale to sit tall, exhale, release your pose, vinyasa, cross legs, inhale up, exhale, going back into the movement, we're using the movement to keep the heat in the practice, resetting the spine with a back bend and a forward bend, those two parts of the nervous system getting the signal, back to seated, back to straight legs. Marichyasana, we're gonna put the right sole of the foot on the floor, bring your right heel as close to the sit bone as you can. Now reach the right arm up, then reach your right arm, your other, your other right arm, now reach it forward, get the back of the arm around the front, go around the outside of the right leg and hold the hand at the back of the right hip. Squeeze the right leg, inhale, and then exhale, fold towards the left big toe for one. We're getting back into this idea of the bind, using the arms and the legs, contributing to the action of the positions for three. Squeezing the leg, but breaking the bind of the arms with the leg for four. And five, your next Inhale would bring you up. Exhale would straighten the right leg out. Inhale, you would plant your left foot down. Exhale, your left arm wraps around the left leg. Inhale. Exhale, forward bend along the inside of the right leg. One. Marichi Asana. Marichi was a famous Indian warrior for two, three, four, five. Back to the vinyasa. Inhale up, exhale, release your left side. Cross your legs, you know what to do. Breath and movement together. Next up is going to be the same position with your legs, but we do it as a twist. We're going to switch the arms. So we would plant the right foot again. 
You got it. Now put the right hand behind you on the floor. Good. Now use the left arm. Inhale to the outside of that knee. You can have the hand up or reach the hand down towards the outer edge of the right foot. Inhale, sit up as tall as you can. And exhale, turn the chin back towards the right shoulder for one. Two. You can do the behind if you want. It's just she doesn't do it, so. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, look to the front. Exhale, untwist straight legs. Left leg, inhale, plant the foot. Turn towards it, exhale. It's the right arm, inhale, we lift. And exhale, we press the back of the arm to the outside of the left leg. Inhale, press into the back hand to help you to sit up tall. And exhale. For one. Marichi Asana. C variation. For two. Three. Four. Five. Look front. Inhale. Release the twist. Exhale. Cross your legs, take a flow. Next up, our Navasana boat pose, everyone's favorite position. Jump through, lean your spine back at 45 degrees, raise the legs, bent or straight. Just reach the feet away from you. We're at two, we can do three sets, three, Four, five. Now in between, cross your legs, put the hands down. Inhale, lift your bum up, put your bum down, raise up your legs, second set, and then the arms. You got it. Five, lift whatever is dropping. Four, three, two, one. Pull the legs in, hands down, inhale, bum up, and hips down. Last set, lifting. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Cross your legs. Inhale, lift the bum up. Then exhale, jump back and take a flow. Stop momentarily when you get to your downward dog. Next position begins in a squat. So you're going to jump your feet to where your pinky fingers are. Inhale, jump forward. And for the first count of five, just take a, a, a squat position. The squat will open you up for what we are about to do. So you can put your hands in prayer or the hands on the ground. Just try to lower the sit bones down. We're already at three. And two. And one. Now where you are now, you got to lift your bum up to the height of your knees. So lift the bum up, bum up, bum up, up. There it goes. Now take the hands on the inside and put them on the floor behind the heels. Right. Now lower your bum back down and then wiggle your feet as close as they can get. Maybe you can touch them together or maybe you can lift them up and hook them. Like flex the two ankles at 90 degrees and hook them as I count down from five. Falling over is a sign that you're trying. I love it. Four. We fall over, we get back up, we do it again. Three. This is the pose that we use crow to get out of into the flow in two. And one. So wherever you are, put the hands at the front of your mat. Put your knees up onto the backs of the arms. Challenge yourself in your bakasana for as long as you choose. Not too long now. We only got a 90 minute class. <laughs> when you've had enough, you take a flow.
And after this vinyasa flow, you're going to jump back to a seated position. And we're just going to do regular turtle, not the second variation. So for this position, we got to start by bending the knees. So you're going to put your feet on the outer edges of the mat. And now first to get into this pose, bring your elbows on the insides of your legs, bring the elbows to the floor. And then reach the arm and better yet, the back of the shoulder underneath the back of the knee. And bring your hands out to the side and start to wiggle walk the hands so the hands are moving towards the wall behind you. So you got your hands, there you go. So the hands go back. Now work on straightening your legs, your feet go forward. Feet go forward, hands go back. Karmasana, the turtle pose, counting down, five. Just work on straightening the legs, four. Even if they can't get straight, that is the action that you're working on, three. Two. And one. We can do, why not? Option, you can stay right where you are for a second set of five. Or if you wanna go one step deeper, you're gonna lift your hands up to the area of your lower back, like you're gonna bring your hands together. Your feet now, just wiggle the feet on the floor and wiggle the feet towards each other. So the soles of the feet are gonna to come together at the top of the head. So in a way, we're bringing our hands as close as we can get together behind us. And we're getting our feet, which are at the front, we're wiggling them as close as they can get together at the top of the head. There's no real pretty way to wiggle into this position. Just go into a place which you can't wiggle anymore and then breathe. Remember, this is a, a breathing practice energy practice. It's all work on the organs which affect your nervous system, nervous system affecting your energy. Let's take a flow. So put your palms onto the floor. Lift yourself up. Jump yourself back and take a flow. Bada Kanasana. So you're gonna join the soles of the feet and bring the heels close to the groin. We do this position twice. So the first position, you gotta open your chest. So pull the arms back so the chest is open, chin parallel to the floor, and you fold forward from the groins. So when you go forward, don't lead with your face like you just did. Don't lead with the chin, lead with your belly. Think about your belly button is what is going forward. And when it can't go any more forward, pull the shoulders back, bring the chest forward and bring your ears back on top of the shoulders. Open the front body, lift the chest, sorry, lift your chin up from the collarbones. That's what we do in the second variation. Think of the upper body wide, open, just like you would in your upward dog. What would your chest look like right now if you're doing an upward dog position? You got it. Now inhale, sit up as tall as you can. Now we do the opposite of that. Now literally tuck your chin down to the chest. The shoulders will come in, the chest will get smaller, and you exhale the forehead straight down to the toes. So now it's not the belly going forward. In this variation, the belly is moving back in towards the spine. And instead of folding down at the groins, you're folding from the top of the spine down. At three. And two. One. Your next inhale. 
you sit up as tall as you can. Exhale, you close your knees, you cross your legs, you plant your hands, you take your flow. Come on back to the seated position for Upavishta Kanasana, another pair of positions. Open the legs out at 90 degrees. Pull the flesh out from underneath the sitting bone. Your hands inhale, grip the outer edges of the feet just below the pinky toes. And exhale, you are attempting to fold your belly to the floor. Then the chest. And then the chin. So lengthen out of the pelvis forward in space. Backs of the thighs are pressing down. Bring it back to that understanding of samasiti. A straight leg is a straight leg. Thigh is active, creating space at the back of the thigh through the engagement of the top of the thigh. Now we're going to do this exact same position, but with the legs in the air. So inhale, sit up. Bring your feet into Baddha Konasana. Grip the outer edges of the feet like we were holding. Lean back so your feet come up. Find the balance. Now straighten out your legs and repeat Upavishta. You got it. Looking up to the ceiling above. So you look up in this variation. We're at two. Three. Four, five. We take a vinyasa flow, hands down, cross legs, lift up, jump back. Now we're gonna move into what's called the closing sequence. Closing sequence is the knowledge of asana to get you ready for your shavasana position. So jump through, lie down on your back, bend the knees, and put the two feet on the floor hip distance apart. And it's better to give an extra inch between the feet than too little of an inch. So it, gave, it gives us more access to what we can do with the pelvic floor. So here we want to refine that neutral pelvis. You're going to lower the belly button down, but you keep that little curve in the lower back. In other words, don't allow the lumbar spine to touch the floor. Now keep that angle that you have, press into the four corners of the feet, inhale, lift your hips up to the height of your knees, and then wiggle the arms underneath. So you're literally on the backs of the arms, and it's the work of your legs that's literally lifting your chest to your chin. We're at two. We can do three of these in total with a little break in between, three. Four, five, use the exhale and lower down to the floor for five. Four, three, you can repeat the same variation or full Urdhva Dhanrasana, you would have your hands up on the floor above the shoulders. Four, so we want to recreate the foundation. Feet and hands to find the neutral pelvis. When you do a back bend, always keep the soles of your feet on the ground. Inhale up to the crown of the head, draw the elbows in, then inhale, push up off of the head like you're going to straighten the arms for one, two, Three, four, five, chin to chest, lower all the way down to the back so you don't even clunk your head on the floor on the way down. Protect your neck, save the neck. One more set to go. Let's 
So let's create the foundation of the feet and the hands. We recheck neutral pelvis and we pull those front ribs down into the body. Inhale, come up halfway onto the head. So you can pull the elbows in so they line with your armpit. And then inhale, press into the palm and lift off the head. I count down from five. That's good. Keep trying to lift. Even if you can't lift, just keep trying to lift. Four. Keep sending the signal to your body to do what it want, you want it to do for three. It will eventually respond for two. One. Exhale, come on down. Now roll over to your right side. Inhale, come up to a seated position. Straighten out your two legs. Now we take a gentle forward bend. So what you can do is take your lower arm bones under the backs of the knees and gently fold forward. Or you can do it a little bit more actively like what we did in gripping the feet and actively folding forward. All forward bends are opening the space of your lower back for the kidney. The kidney communicates to your parasympathetic nervous system to lower your heartbeat and your blood pressure and to start to remove that stimulation. All forward bends are not stretches for the hamstrings, they are to calm you down. Can you observe, articulate that energetic shift that's happening right now? Notice what is changing on the inside. Counting down from five. Four. Three, two, and one. Inhale up, exhale, cross your legs, take another flow, after which we do our inversion sequence. So my suggestion is to take your mat against the wall. You're gonna lie on your back and rest the backs of your thighs and your hips against the wall. Viparani Karani. So since all asanas are designed to affect the organs, here, what we're affecting is the heart. It's easier for the heart to pump when the body is lying on the ground and when we have the legs elevated higher than the heart. What we have here is the gravity is helping the heart to pump by pulling all the venous blood from the legs through the force of gravity back to the pump of the heart. So in a way here, the pump doesn't have to work as hard as it would when you're standing upright. And when we can trigger the heart to relax, the heart gives permission to all the other systems to relax. Energetically, we are preparing the body for Shavasana. Lie there so still that maybe you can notice the shift that's happening inside.
last minute. At this point, you should be able to notice the subtle effect on your inner environment. Exhale, come down from the wall and sit upright in a cross-legged or half lotus or full lotus position. We can do a little forward bend called Vada Padmasana. You're gonna take your arms around the back and hold the outside of the opposite elbow unless of course the big toes are available to your reach. And exhale, you forward bend and lower your forehead to the floor at the front. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, four, Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Join your first finger and thumb, put your hands to the fronts of your knees. Sit up as tall as you can, but do lower your chin halfway down towards the collarbones. Here would be the first time we close the eyes of the practice. observing the effect on the body we've had so far. Here, a slower count of 10. Nine. Seven. Three, two, and one. One last lift up. So you're gonna put your hands to the floor and either go up and down for 10 or go up and stay up. Inhale, lift the hips, 10. It's a quick count, nine, eight, seven. Make sure you're breathing, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release, unlock your legs and lie down on your back, taking your Shavasana. About six, seven minutes here on her back. And then I'll wake you up and we'll finish sound of all.
without moving now, take a deep inhale. Before you start moving, notice first what has changed, what has shifted, what's different in terms of your energy now. Whatever has changed, keep it with you with the rest of your day. Start to move the body and curl up into a little ball in the fetal position on your right side. Take a few more breaths there. Inhale, help yourself up, cross your legs, join your palms. And we close up our little ritual with the sound of Om. Inhale. Om. Thank you so much for practicing with us today. Hope to see you again next week, or even better yet, hope to see you in person one of these times.